Yeah, archaeologists were investigating this legend of El Dorado that Oriana found in the in the Amazon, mm -hmm. and um, anyway, people came you know, 50 years later or so, and nothing there, empty jungle, and they also discovered that when um, when you when you slash and burn, um, you've depleted the soil and the, the people move on after, after a couple of years. But what they found, they found this looking from the air, um, and only from the air, dead straight lines, roads, apparently roads, and uh, with nodes of extremely fertile soil, this black earth, they call terra preta, it's Portuguese for black earth. And it was extraordinarily productive. It would it just produce year after year after year. Um, and that hasn't been duplicated, I have to say, but we want to duplicate it. Um, people are paying, local farmers are paying to truck the place out onto their farms. Oh, great. Uh, no, it's not, there's nothing idealistic about it. Mm. It works. Mm. But it hasn't as yet been duplicated. Um, there's something very subtle about, I suspect, about the... Um, it's not just the chemistry, it's the biology of it. Um, because charcoal is a, um, that makes this black earth black is um, a perfect medium for bacteria. It's got an enormous surface area, so it absorbs and loosely holds nitrate and phosphate, which is a bit unusual. Now, clay doesn't normally hold phosphate, but this, um, this charcoal stops it being leached into the sea. <clears throat> and it's uh, it's kept available for plants. Um, yeah, so they yeah, but anyway, of course, you know, people thought, well, this is the reverse of climate change. If we take carbon out out of the air and put it into the ground, it's good for hundreds of years at least. We think ma maybe thousands of years. So it's a it's a very safe way of sequestering carbon. No one's going to dig it up and burn it. And and um, you know, if, if if a drought takes out the takes out the forest and burns it, then um, um, you've still got the charcoal in the ground. Because mm. you were it, telling me about the was it a factory nearby or the the guy? Yes, yeah, yeah. There's a um, publicly spirited gentleman um, at Dargaville, as Dave Underwood has um, was um, producing charcoal. And um, anyway, the market got cut out from under him. He was making it for, the, for barbecues, and uh, LPG took out his market. <laughs> so he had this great, great supply, and he, he's made it available for no, no cost. And I've been um, trundling it over to different people to, on the condition that they trial it. <laughs> mm. they, so far, people connected with North Tech have um, uh, the tutors have been uh, running experiments, and um, yeah, just just to see just to see if we can get it working. It does improve the soil, but not not um, yeah. And it, it holds troublesome nutrients, keeps them out of waterways. Yeah, so we want to. Um, mm, that's interesting. Isn't it, 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 so it's a matter of yeah. I'm pretty sure it, I can waterlog that charcoal. So, you know, the, the typical, no, a lot of the trials are at one kilogram per square metre. And I think that's, that could hold, you know, maybe four litres of water. Mm -hmm. So you go into a drought with an extra four litres of water mm -hmm. per, wow, per square metre. Oh, maybe that's overstating it, two to four litres. Yeah. So, but, so how would um, an average person at home make... Well, it? don't, don't, because... Um, um, you have to burn the wood without um, without air, mm. and when you're doing that, a whole lot of volatile gases come off, mm. and everyone will hate you. They're, they're, they're carcinogenic. Mm. It's, it's quite difficult to get the permits, so um, the race is on to find a um, an efficient, um, clean process. That they are around, but they're not cheap. Mm. So, like. Um, that's interesting because I was like trying about three million dollars and yeah. Yeah, because I was hearing about what's happening and um, you know those big huge um, gorillas are living with the white back. You know, the white oh, the silverback. Yeah, the silverback yeah, gorilla. Yeah, yeah. Well, their habitat's being destroyed because 
people are the desperate local for energy, yeah. Charcoal. Mm. Yes. So they actually burn their habitat yeah. to make charcoal. Yes. To sell. Yes. To yes. for people to eat off. It would cost yeah. probably ten million dollars to um, bring in a gas substitute yeah. to his community because the, there's only, I think, 100 left. Yeah, yeah, there's okay, and then you draw in another 50 million desperate people. <laughs> yeah, it's scary, isn't it? Yeah, no, so it's, it's a problem, but it, it has to be done on a global scale. Now, they're, 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 they're intending to burn the charcoal. It is messy, but it was a traditional um, trade mm. hundreds of years ago. They'd, they'd just you know, s stick a great pile of waste wood together and uh, set fire to it and then throw dirt on it right. and almost extinguish the fire. And so that when they shut off the oxygen, the, the, the process would continue without oxygen, what they call pyrolyzing. And so it starts spewing out um, tar and um, hydrogen, carbon monoxide, methane. Um, Yes, and to waste. So what I'd like to do, what, what a lot of people are trying to do, is to capture that as a form of energy. Now that's, that's, that's a premium energy, but not with the tar in it. So one possibility is to run it through a bin full of sawdust to um, get the tar out of it so it's clean enough to run through an internal combustion generator. And then you can sell power to the grid or to to power some some process, or maybe maybe a power a lime kiln, some some low temperature process. But it needs I I no I think what everyone wants is a process that fits on the back of a truck, because waste wood is worth less than nothing <laughs> in a forestry operation. So you you have to bring the the process to the to the waste, and then you take away something. Valuable. Something high valuable, yeah, something that's worth. Now that could be, so the products are, are charcoal, the wood gas, and there's also bio oil, that's the tar. It, it's an emulsion with, um, uh, um, with water and it's of poor quality fuel, but there is a market, there's a substantial market. Like Asians are just desperate for energy, any form of energy, clean, dirty, they don't care. Um, yeah, like so like, like sixty cents a litre. Um, sorry, I don't know, mm -hmm. but th there is a price on it. Mm -hmm. I was told sixty cents, and I imagine they could just stick it into a into a cement k kiln. Um, that that way, the the um, the nasties get you know, completely destroyed at high temperature and uh, converted to simple, harmless well, should we have products. Should we look at it? Yeah, yeah, look yeah. This is um, yeah. Is Yes, yeah, yeah, and that's an interesting one. Yeah, it's it's the uh, what's called Onorahi chaos. Oh, it's it's right. it's it's all clay. It's it's um, yeah, difficult difficult to work we're, with. We're exactly the same. Yeah, you, you finish up oh, with a kilogram on each on each boot, <laughs> and um, yeah, so yeah, so I've, I'm able to get a ton at a time with a an ancient an ancient van and uh, and a trailer, and. Um, so I get bags of it. It's in chunks. This was reject charcoal. Oh, it's really um, light. Yeah, yeah. It's very light, even though it's been exposed it's been, to to the weather. Yeah. And it's um. Yeah, it, it's not um. That, that that's not biochar. Biochar is defined as finely divided, but that which that isn't. So um, I'm playing around with um, two kilograms per square meter to. Um, <laughs> so hopefully I've got one kilogram per square meter of the of the real biochar. Yeah, so that's been put through a hopper. What we started off with bits the size of my thumb, mm -hmm. and that was too small for barbecues. So, so like that, yeah, like like this stuff yeah, over here. The, the yeah, this is um, big chunks. Yeah. Yeah. I get yeah. Now, hear that tinkling sound? Mm. Yeah. That, um, Oh, no, you can't hear it now, but it doesn't happen with all of them. Maybe it wasn't tinkling, but that, that's a very high, yeah, that was tinkling. That's a very high grade of charcoal. That's where you've driven off all the volatiles. Um, that's a very high value product, 